let's put together another set for a celebrity one our second one at McGolf <laughs> As I sort of showed you in the beginning, the uh, there was a bit of an unboxing, and it may be I might put it at the end as kind of an outtake. I'm not a big unboxing guy. It doesn't really do much, you know. You already know what you're getting, so why you think it's important to unbox it and see it, I don't know. But what we do is we take it, we open it up, we compare it to the packing list to make sure everything's in there, and then we move on because in this particular set which is a set of Callaway Apex Pros. See that? Apex Pros. Callaway Apex Pros. These are for Clay Walker. Now, Clay Walker is a country music uh, singer and a very accomplished singer at that. He started in the mid-90s, had a handful of number one hits and some platinum albums. And a, uh, another friend of ours from Cincinnati, a uh, Matthew Kelly, brought him over here and we put him through the fitting process and we ended up with a total Callaway setup meaning the uh, the driver is the uh, epic driver with the uh, hazardous green shaft in it we got a three and a five wood with a corresponding shaft and we got two epic hybrids which tended to work really really well for him and then what we found was this was the club head that he liked, but the shaft that they could put in there uh, really didn't exist. So as far as what the option is available, uh, because I'm a tour spec dealer, I get the UST recoil in a whole nother model. It's called the tour spec series. And the tour spec series has a little longer tip, a little less torque, just a slightly nicer shaft. Actually, it's a lot nicer shaft and uh, we're going to put those in these irons and so what we have to do is we have to take apart these irons they have the project x in them and we're going to put in these we're going to put in the recoil okay and these are the recoils and the 808 shows that they're the tour spec and so we're going to make that because he liked a little bit lighter didn't necessarily need something more flexible but something is slightly lighter and when he did it right into the slot controlled the shot process where he wanted it and so that's what we're going to do we're really going to work over the irons and one of the wedges we got a uh, recoil proto to go into it to help him out with in the uh, sand wedge area so what we're going to do we're going to take the clubs apart we're going to weigh everything just like we do in all the other assemblies and then we're going to flow and frequency match and spine find uh, all the irons and we're going to make those up and then based on uh, what I find is what I need for a ferrule we'll determine what kind of ferrule I put back on there and then we're going to use uh, Patriot Grips from Golf Pride uh, Mr. Walker is from Texas, a very patriotic individual and he likes the corded style grips so he liked those once he, once he saw them so we're going to put those on so stay with me we're going to do this in segments as we go forth now we're going to talk about these golf clubs as we're putting them together kind of like a a golf club basics as well so that you guys can uh, that are watching this you know I, I'm getting questions now about golf club basics uh, so we'll talk about that as we go along too. Okay, you guys have seen this before. Uh, I'm going to try and keep the plastic on to give it that good look, the good new look when we go to ship it. Uh, but if it doesn't work out, maybe, you know, sometimes the flame will go up that way and start melting it off, then I'll just pull it off altogether. However, by keeping the plastic on, it uh, gives it that level of protection, and that's what I'm just looking for. So uh, as you've seen in other videos, Got to wear gloves because we're going to be working with a torch. Torch, cooler, more precise, uh, better spot. We'll try this one more time. Nobody came in this time around. All right, so what we got to do is we've got to take all the shafts out of the clubs, and I'm down to three more left. We've got to heat up the hosel 
and then uh, we're going to take basically get this ferrule to bubbling and then we're going to pull it off and we do that with the butane torch and we got to have our gloves on Now you saw about 10 seconds a spot to pull it down and it's pretty tough. These ferrules are pretty good and they tend to want to cool really quick so there's a plus and a minus there that the fact that they're good ferrules but they're pretty hard to take out. So I got to heat them up and I'll show you what the disadvantage to this is once I get them out. And all I'm doing is I'm putting the knife edge against it and then I'm dragging it down. Okay. So I got a lot out. I didn't get it all. I'm going to have to put this in the puller. Make sure you can see the puller. There you go. Again, just like on the other videos, 20 seconds a shot. Get it in the puller. See how this works out. In this case, I'm going to hold on to the head. Right, there we go. <clears throat> now, here's something I wanted to show you. If you look here on the end there, there's a bit of a cap. Sometimes they come out in the shaft, sometimes they don't. If they don't, that means you got to go hunting it in the hosel, which means you got to drill it out. If you don't, then that's a good thing. So next is, since these were 355s and I'm putting 370s in, you got to hit it with the reamer. Now the thing with this is there's always stuff at the bottom, so you got to drill that out. all that done we're going to clean it up okay now here's the disadvantage I don't know if you can see it but every once in a while what happens is that ferrule goo melts over top it melts over melts over top of it and what you got to do is you just got to flick it off because it, all it is is plastic it's nothing against the chrome and then you finish it off again. Nice and shiny again. So I'm going to do the last two and you just saw what I did and it's the same process over and over and over again. The uh, thing you want to remember is if you get the goo or the ferrule over top of that then you got to take it off before assembly. Uh, the other part is uh, I've been asked before is well while I'm reaming it out why did I ream it out first then drill it and then ream it again well in taper tips the amount that's tapered is only about that much and the amount of glue that's in the bottom could be about that much so I clean it out with the with the reaming tool and then I drill out the rest of it and then I go back in and I ream it all the way down to the bottom and if you saw it cut out some material now the second question is, well, how much material does it take? Well, very, very little because you're talking going from 3 point or 0.355 to 0.370. So 
So it's not very much that you're taking out, so the weight is basically negligible. So I'm just making it so that it will fit the shafts. So I'm going to finish these out, and then we'll go into the assembly phase. Okay, welcome back to the other side. Uh, this is the assembly side of it, and I don't know if you can see the tops, but there's the drivers and the fairway woods and the hybrids. And my lob wedge that we're not going to check. What we've done is, is I've measured out all the shafts and they were within a gram of each other and then I measured out all the heads and I only had to sorry about that only had to add weight to one head they were all in line save one uh, and that was the eight iron so I put a little extra weight in that one in order for them to line out properly and I did that with a tip weight now a tip weight for graphite is a little different than a tip weight for a steel shaft and let me show you we'll use this one notice how the ends how wide that is that is more of a tip weight for a steel shaft whereas you would have a weight that looks like that so it has a smaller shank on it that is what goes into the graphite and I didn't need very much I just needed a, about a two or three so I had to put one of these in there it has one of those now the real trick with this one is that the hole that's in the end of that is not big enough to receive that it doesn't go in so I had to drill out the tip just a tad in order for it to receive this which took out a tenth of a gram maybe so once I put this in here and it felt it got right in there no problems so what I'm doing is I I've gone to the nine iron and what I'm showing you is just the and it's been on all the other ones so if you go back to some of the basic club making videos that I've already done, you'll see this again. We're going to put it into the spine finder, find the spine. Then, which is this, pull down on it, find out where it, pull down on it, find out where it flips, or where there's a hard side, and I can feel it right about here, and right about there which is all the way around. Then you mark it. Alright, now that we have it marked, I have to cut it for frequency. Alright, I like taking off just a little less than what I think I need. That way, if you don't over... it's like carpentry. It's hard to put it back on once you cut it off. What I've also found is that the ends of these guys are a little bit, the shaft is a little bit bigger than the hosel, so I've been having to sand it down, which is kind of a good thing. <clears throat> Measuring it to its length that it's supposed to be. And it's very, very soft, so we're going to cut some more. Done. I was looking for a 5.2, Mr. Clay, just to get you a bit over the 5.0. Uh, we found out that, you know, his swing speed was right at about that 5.0 range. Give it a little bit more because his tendency is a bit of a draw. And this, it's less than a quarter of a flex, so it's not like it's a huge deal, but it just gives it that little bit more personal touch. Now we're going to do the flooring. That's way off. It's closer. you can see that all right so we got to go up and down now it looks kind of funny on that bottle because of the way it was going but it was straight up and down and I mark it that's what we've got so we've got all the we got all the lengths uh, adjusted 
We've trimmed it to the frequency and all the weights are pretty good. So now we're going to do the wedge, which is this guy with the prototype shaft and the Callaway uh, Mac Daddy forged. These things are sweet. All right. Make sure those go on there like that. We'll flow this one and then we'll go on and do the insertion. So let me do this and we'll come back and we'll start putting them together. Okay, we're into the assembly phase and what I've done is I've mixed my epoxy. That's a one to one ratio because it's a 24 hour glue epoxy. Put in some quick center so that the shaft rides around the exact middle of the hosel which is teeny weeny clearance but it's just a little thing that we do. And we've gone with the uh, three quarter collared ferrules. You see that little shoulder? And the reason why for the shoulder is there's a shoulder inside the hosel. I don't know if you can see it. But it fits in there just like that. Okay? So we're going to use that. So what you're going to see me do is we're going to get a little bit of glue on the, on the shaft. We slide the ferrule on. And that way it uh, it gets the glue on it. You know, you have ever get those ferrule creep where the ferrule separates. Well, that's kind of what stops it. We press it down. Okay. Now the the trick to glue is just to have it enough and not and not too much. And I like spinning it around into the hosel so you get even coverage. Then I line up my marks. Okay, see how that, uh, there was a change in sound so I know I got to the bottom. Then you have the two by two squares of paper towels. So that you wipe it off and it's clean. Because cleaning up just means more time. We don't want that. And then to prevent any, because when glue does this, it's an exothermic reaction. So we want to, and it, it will sometimes tend to want to push away. So I use a little tape. And then onto my rack it goes. So I'm just going to let you watch and do this and we'll speed it up so we can get to the end. so that was the assembly process now we got to wait our 24 hours for it to dry we'll do the ferrules cut them to length put the grip on and do a loft and lie and the final spec measurement on them and then out the door they'll go so mr. Walker uh, tomorrow afternoon we you should be getting a shipping notice uh, again if you like what you saw please uh, hit the like button and if you want to know more about this uh, let's uh, do a subscribe would if you would now the last thing was some club basics now the golf club basics uh, there's a grip a shaft and a club head we know that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the different parts of the club head and I'm gonna do that on the next uh, segment as we're putting it together so stay tuned We got to heat up the hosel.
How about that? Okay, here we go. Welcome back to the McGolf shop. And as I so, sort of showed you in the beginning, okay, we just got it. We just got it warmed up just a little bit, enough to try and pull her down. And we used the 